originally the glass, the, the dials would have been glass, but due to vandalism in York, sadly we've had to replace them with a, a, an acrylic. When the acrylic dials were fitted, I think, oh, seven or eight years ago, they weren't um, a little bit more translucent, and you could see the gearing behind the dials um, when the sun shone through them. So Tom cleverly put uh, a couple of, which I'll show you later, baffles in behind the dials, which helped to diffuse the light and also stop you from seeing straight through the drum when you're walking along Coney Street. So all in all, it's a, it's a great improvement. I think if I do this, eventually the lights will turn off. It's been fitted now with LED lights, so they'll have something like 80,000 hours op uh, operating time. So we're not going to have to climb a ladder and work our way over the back. So now this is how the dial would look um, in normal, normal daylight. And then you should be able to see inside the drum. You'll see how the baffles are fitted. It just helps to diffuse the light. And what we have, what we're looking at here, are the what we call the dial motion works, um, and they give the 12-hour reduction between the hour and minute hand. And then the drive from the clock will come to the central ring here, and just through a simple bevel system, it will turn the hands. With the Admiral, we're going to fit a brack bracketry up inside the top of the drum, which will be driven by a stepper motor uh, and uh, a, a programmer that will allow the figure to follow the sun in the course of 24 hours and do its pirouette on the hour and then get back to its position that it should be for that hour. Originally, when the clock was fitted, this gearing here, the bevel works and motion works, would have been slightly different and a drive would have come off that up into the Admiral. The little fella with his sight staff, we are pretty convinced that originally he would have had an octant in his hands. As you can see when you look at the position of his hands, that they don't quite fit the sight staff. And also a sight staff should be held with the end against your cheek under your eye. Also the sight staff should have varying sizes, increasing sizes in the uh, length of these parts. So we're looking forward to making a replica of the Optant and putting it to his hands. And I think once we've done that, we'll be sure that uh, that is originally what he held. He's an interesting chap. Wood all the way up to about just above his knees and then the rest is cast iron. When we got him off the top of the, the drum clock, we found that he was fitted solidly to the base. Uh, Peter has uh, cleverly fitted a, a thrust bearing into the bottom, and now he rotates very smoothly indeed. And the plan is, uh, Peter's been talking to the my brother who does the electronics, and we're going to fit the spur gears etc underneath the the album inside the drum as i explained before and it'll be dri driven by a stepper motor for a chap of his age he's in remarkably good condition and once we've done the treatment uh, using good quality paints and the modern paints i'm sure he's going to be around looking over york for many many years to come This is the, the main, um, I suppose, work, the work which sits underneath the bracket of the clock. Um, it's made out of tube. Initially we thought it was made out of uh, raw iron, um, but once we um, got it out and uh, onto into the work area here, we discovered that it's a very clever piece of uh, uh, tubular workmanship. Um, the pipes that it was, were, it, that it's manufactured from were seamed and 
the, there's none of those seams that there was corrosion and allowing ingress of water into the structure. And given it several coats of paint and uh, straightened out a little bit of the uh, uh, decorative work and then uh, David went about gilding it. Um, it's gilded in the same areas that the original one was. Apart from with this we've also gilded in to the leaves and under the flowers so when you're walking past it um, you know you get a feeling of the whole uh, thing being solid gold rather than just uh, put on top um, and David's done a, a, a wonderful job with it. Okay what we, what we have here is the the main bracket which is as you can see the most wonderful casting um, which, you know, of, of, of excellent quality. The brackets which you saw in the workshop fit into this area and then the drum will fit into that. Then this section here, horizontally on the floor, bolts up against the wall and there we have it.